Hello everyone, and welcome to Classy Wheel. Today I'm here at the Baltimore Streetcar Museum to hang out with their volunteers as they repair the historic cars on display. Let's see what a day in the life of a volunteer at the Baltimore Streetcar Museum is like. So right off the bat, we're starting up PCC car number 2168, which I drove a couple videos ago. I'm gonna back it out and put it in the sun to warm it up so I can hopefully paint. And this is Harry with the Friends of doing? the Philadelphia Trolleys. And Baltimore Streetcar Museum. So I've never actually done this, but I've always wanted to try it. Okay, just put it on the wire. So you grab the pole, like so. Oh, it's hard. Yep. And bingo. Okay. Last fall, we put brand new doors on it. The old doors were 49 years old and had seen better days. Hopefully, if the, if the weather warms up, I want to paint the interior of the doors to match the inside of the car. Matt is going to work on the door motors on doors one and two because for some reason the new doors are not talking to the old door motors. So there's some kind of an electrical problem. Now we're going to pull the trolley pole because Matt's going to be working on the door motors and under the hook, let it up. Let it up. Like this? Yep. Okay, you're done. This is an authentic uh, fare box for this type car, for this era that it's paying it in currently. It's been restored, however, inadvertently, the lockbox that contains all the coins and tokens that trickle down through here and then get pumped in it, we can't retrieve it because the lock, someone didn't give us a key or left the key inside when they pushed it in. When it goes in, it latches and opens up a chute so the coins will go into the box. When it's unlocked and pulled out, a cover closes, sealing the contents inside and the separate keys needed to open this box, which a person called a vault puller at the car house removes this and puts an empty one in. So what we're doing here is we've got the new voltmeter installed. I had to open what's called the operator's console or gang switch. It's a large switch panel containing a number of switches which control different functions on the car. Um, the battery is connected, so I do have to be careful here, although the high voltage is off. And basically that enabled me to access, while I'm here, I'm going to, when everyone's clear, take some compressed air and blow all this out. That's a maintenance item that should be done periodically. This is just a little, it keeps things cleaner, prevents debris from coming in this plastic sheet. But periodically we should clean that out. Just like right along the... Yeah, cover up the silver part. Okay. So while Matt and Harry are working on the PCC, Dennis is bringing out the snow sweeper. Because apparently there's some work that needs to be done on the trolley poles. Well, this is a trolley pole, and what we're doing is testing to see there's enough tension on it. Right. You got that one? Let it go. That's about the same, 10 pounds. It feels a little hard. <laughs> yeah. It needs more. Low springs there. Yeah. So here we are on the roof of the snow car, doing some work on the springs. Uh, what we're going to do is this spring puts tension on the trolley pole and keeps the wheel on the wire. It should be adjusted to somewhere between 20 and 25 pounds when that wheel's about 18 foot off the ground. And what we're doing is trying to uh, get it adjusted. You can see as he's tightening, the wheel is pressing more and more into the trolley wire. One of the problems we have is that as we pull the pole down, the tension gets more and more. And that, that can cause a lot of extra stress on the back end where it's tied to the car. The springs were supposed to be designed originally where they compressed equally, where the, mm. the pressure never changed. So we think somebody put the wrong springs on it and they're not designed to be equalizing as they compress. That's our problem right now. Old cars like this, parts are hard to find. You can't call Amazon and order the parts. Near where I live, there is the remnants of an old tourist railroad and they have one of these. I plan in the next month or so to stop by, introduce myself, 
and see if we can work out some kind of a deal to get all the old parts off it. Sounds like the whistle is stuck on. Now we're taking a break for some lunch. And then back to work on the trolleys. Now we're walking up the line a little bit to the maintenance shop. We're gonna check in with Logan and his crew. So the guys told me that at one point, this was part of the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railroad, or the Ma and Pa. I've actually visited the other operating section of track that used to belong to it. Link is up here. This seems like the ultimate library of every trolley part you could ever want. Oh, and never find. And never find. <laughs> so I'm trying to make room to build two sets of trucks here. So we have to rearrange everything, organize some stuff, so that way we have more floor space so we can really work on the trucks and get everything out there. Also, you can check out Logan on YouTube at Operator Logan, which is advertising on his hoodie. I'm building a truck for Baltimore 23-24. It's like 45-43, except it's never got in the air upgrades, so it still has the hand brakes on it. So we have to build that truck, it's a 27E, I believe, and then I have to build a truck from the semi, which is a 27G or something like that. And do you have the parts, or are you kind of scrounging for that? The parts over this area, that's pretty much all for 23, 24. The parts for the semi are kind of sprung throughout the facility right now. We're going around getting them together. The truck for the semi is actually sitting up on the wall right over there. Uh, this one? Yes. What are we looking at here? Uh, I'm looking at the door motors up above in this cabinet and uh, just trying to assess what I got right now. So what do you think's going on here? Uh, I'm gonna try the first thing, uh, Calvin, to see if the, uh, the motors themselves um, have a ground in them, which would be that or basically a burned field, which would make the motor inoperable. So this is the period accurate paint for the doors. And the door saga continues. Yeah. Now what we're trying to do is measure the resistance of the two fields. There's an open and a closed field. And that's what we're trying to measure right now. Oh, is it been warm? Look at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. What we found is both uh, the number one motor and the number two motor have failed electrically. They have a burned field. So our next step will be to search out for another motor. We have one new one in stock. We're going to look for another one. And then another date, you have to pull each gearbox, bring it down to the ground, and change each motor. We found that one, it's a three amp circuit. Uh, it's supposed to have a 5.6 amp slow blow fuse. We found it had a 30 amp fuse in the circuit. It's the same size, but the, uh, the motor, instead of the fuse protecting the motor, the motor unfortunately protected the fuse. That's a 30. It's a 30? <laughs> this one. Is, yeah. It's the wrong one. So now we're driving the backhoe up to the turning loop to, what are we doing? We're going to pull out two pieces of track to stop in on a new track of the tank. That's going to get moved off of our main track. That way we can use the outer and the inner loop. We're going to put it over in this spot. Now what we're planning on doing right now is building track out 90 degrees, straight out in the veil. That way we can bring it around. That tamp will actually pick up and rotate on itself. So we can just push it right off. Back in there, we're going to fence it in and all, and that will be where all of our track will Stop this. Choo choo, we're a train! <laughs> no. So back at the ranch, Matt is still working on his motors. So these I were two spare several. old stock, oh. used old stock Oops, motors we had yeah. in the car house as spares. Uh, but we're not going to reuse them. They, neither one uh, is very good electrically. 
So they'll be cores for future rebuilding. <laughs> now back here is a former Philadelphia PCC car that has been converted into a work car. And its future here is kind of in question. So you can see the sides are very rusty and corroded. Now this car is potentially going to come in handy for Matt's door problem because he told me that on a future visit to the museum, he is going to try to remove some motors from this car's doors and put them into 2168 instead. Well, it's five o'clock. We have been at the museum since about 9.30 and a lot of work has been done. So now for a little fun before we head on home. So let's see how much I remember from last week. Okay. Don't let your foot off the dead man if you have it back in the park. Still got it! And so we come to the end of our day here at the Baltimore Streetcar Museum. Lots of small things happened. Not a lot of, you know, big, crazy, momentous things happened, but at the end of the day, these cars and this track are that much better off because of all the volunteers who came here and did the work that they did. If you want to support the Baltimore Streetcar Museum, there's a link in the description. Also, I forgot to mention in my last shot, huge shout out to everybody here for hosting me today including Harry, Logan, and everyone else you saw on screen. And until next time, take care.